Howdy, beautiful Bart here, and welcome. It's not a normal time that I would be streaming, but couldn't sleep, not feeling well, so I'm gonna fiddle around here. So, where we were in the basic training series, kind of wanted to expand on a little bit. Got our NPC, we can shoot him, they fall over, he dead. A few seconds later, he despawns. But if we get close enough to him and in his visible range, he turns red. He's angry. He will chase us. Still shoot him. He dies. He doesn't do anything besides that. Um, he doesn't attack yet. Um, our range, while we're in this mode, we can't shoot very far. But when we go into sniper mode, yeah, we can actually do it. Get extended range when we're in sniper mode, so that is lovely. Our map is absolutely hideous, but nah, it was never meant to be a production level on the uh, the map itself yet. So let's add some functionality to our bots. First thing I want to do is go to our blueprints, go into our bot base. And I remove the, the color change whenever they die. Just wasn't worth working with. So, if it any damage, it's going to go ahead and do its usual thing here. But I want to add another function in here. And what I like to do is whenever I shoot at the bot, I want it to, whenever it receives damage, I want it to get angry and then turn towards me. So, we have the on sea pawn, and it's going to go ahead and turn them to red. And if they lose us, they're going to turn back to white again. So, I kind of want to expand on that. They're going to automatically change colors when they see us. But we want to do something else here on the take damage. And we can probably branch off from here. Branch off from the branch. Makes sense, right? Um, so, what it's asking here is if our health is equal to zero or less and if so then go ahead and do our death uh, sequence if not we can actually run a custom event right here so let's go ahead and create that custom event and call this injured and what I want to do is I want the bot to actually face us whenever he actually or he or she whatever takes damage so whenever they actually take damage, they'll actually turn towards us, and that's what we're going to have to do here. So as it stands now, whenever we shoot them, it's just whatever. They don't pay any attention to us. They just get shot. So I want them to turn around, face us, then they'll see us, and then they'll come after us. So let's add that functionality in here. Um, we need to figure out a way to know who shot us. So, even any damage was instigated by, um, well, we know it's us, and the actor object reference, we can actually go ahead and cast that too. Um, probably going to need that in there, so let's see if we can add that into our custom event. So, let's try cast to our player, which is our player base. And I'm going to grab the object reference, and it won't let me plug it into there, but um, we should be able to pass it through from here to there. So let's see if we can actually get this to work. From here, we'll do injured. And we have a target reference, but that's only going to refer to self. So we're going to look for a way of actually getting this information here. We may actually have to um, skip doing the custom event for now so that we can actually do this. Damage causer actor reference. And let's see what we can do with that. Damage causer. Damage Causer is us, the player. Let's 
see if it'll pull to that. This is purely experimental off of running this. A lot of these things I actually just make up as I go along. And we will try to get that information from here. And let's see if it, it will work the way that I think it will. So let's get world location. And yeah, it'll just pull a reference to our mesh. And that's fine. So there's actually a look at feature. Find look at, you got look at function and find look at rotation. If we try looking at this one right here, it's going to look for a lot of information. And, you know, let's try the other one to show you what it looks like as well. Find look at rotation. And target would be us, the player. And now for the start, we need to actually get a reference to our mesh. So I'm going to pull in a mesh reference. And get world location. And then from there, what we need to actually do then is probably make some damn room here. Um, let's do that. Just to have a wee bit of room to work with. Alright, so we're at this point where we've gotten the target, which is us, and we've gotten the, the bot itself, its location. And now, let's go ahead and tell it to do something here and we need to set actor rotation to this new value target is self and it should be fine but it never hurts to go ahead and plug in a extra so let's see if that quickly thrown together thing here actually works so if we shoot at him did not work. He did not turn to look at us. So we got our damage causer as the actor object reference and then event when actor takes any damage and target is actor. It's instigated by and it's usually a controller reference. So let's actually try a couple different things. We want to get a reference to the actual world location of whoever is pulling the trigger. And try get doesn't work. And player state's not going to work. Okay, so we need another way of getting that information to find out who our target is, who actually pulled the trigger. And would think that casting to the, the player would have been the, the actual correct one. Because it's our player that's actually the one that's doing the damage. So we need to try to get that information from them. Get a mesh reference here. Plug this back in. Um, you see, we got from our on-c pawn. That's one thing. Because we have turned around and we have seen the pawn. This one right here, we just need to find the reference to actually pull that information in and throw it in there. I'll try a couple different things, see what I can come up with. We know that this is not going to work because it just doesn't sense it. And this is what should happen, is it should turn to us and at that point do our damage. 
So let's try it the other way around here. We have the other look at function. So we have look at vector, we have use up vector, so if it's looking up and right or whatever. Um, we're setting our transform at this point. And I don't really need a transform, I just need the rotation. So the other one does look like it's probably going to be the correct one. So look at rotation. This is good for setting up turrets as well. <coughs> All right, excuse me. And we know that we're getting our own mesh reference here for the start. So that is a given. All right, so that's going to be our start. How's everybody doing this morning? Everybody jumping in here watching and being awful silent watching me screw up. Instigated by controller object reference. So we'll get actor location. But I'm sure this is not actually going to be what we need here. Um, the instigated by is what we need to pull from the controller because once we actually are doing this stuff then we're eating, needing to actually change our rotation so we want to set actor rotation Yeah, let's get that a little bit better location. Plug that in. I want him to turn around. There we go. Quickly turned around and is now chasing us. So there was a message. Oh, lovely. So it did not like it. Um, for the additional shots there. Accessing none, trying to read property, and it was for the set actor rotation. So let's just go ahead and set a reference to self, just to be on the safe side. And then, um, if we need to, we can run a do once on here, because he only needs to do it the one time, and then reset after, you know, whatever. But let's try it. Let's see if we can get rid of that bug. So, fired one shot, and he turns around, faces us, comes after us, and you still didn't like it. Execute the feature here. He didn't like it. He didn't like it at all. Just like in Real Engine 4. Take something that should be simple, and make it more complicated. Um, try a couple different things here just to try to force things to be right. Sure that's not going to do it, but yep, just broke it actually. Um, Yeah. So let's try that. Um, and I know this isn't probably going to be the right thing here. Because we just need to find out why it doesn't like what we're doing here. Other than the fact that it's on Realm 4. See, every time I shoot him now, it shouldn't be affected anymore, but. Um, it still has a problem with my set actor rotation. Note that 
won't matter either, but just grasping at straws and trying to get rid of this air. Why must you make something so simple, so difficult, Unreal Engine 4? It's working. Why it's giving an error, I have no clue. Because there is actually nothing wrong with this. This is getting the right information. It's it's working. If it wasn't working, then, you know, go from there. But what is it actually not liking from this? It's trying to access none, is what it's saying, but that doesn't make any sense. So we'll look at the error closely, and hopefully it'll say something that makes sense. So, blueprint runtime error, access none, trying to read property, K2 node, event instigated by. It doesn't like the, in, the instigated by, so that's where it's having the problem. And the instigated by is this. So it is not liking that. And if try to run this to here, instead, let's see if it likes that damage causer. Will it even work, or do we break it again? Okay, it worked, and still an error. You still don't freaking like it. Oh, Unreal Engine 4, you suck. Event damage causer. Something as simple as just shooting somebody, they turn around, they face you, So why don't you actually like the damage causer on that? I mean, we could just ignore the, the error because it works. Um, but instead, we want to try to figure out why it doesn't like it. So actor object reference. I mean, we've got the, the get actor location. If we just ignore the idea that it's broken. We shoot from this angle. He turns and looks, but he wasn't looking in exactly the right location. That's fine. He turns, looks, sees me, and then comes forward after it, but every shot that we fire is going to cause that issue. All right, who's got a clue here? We could probably go into the um, player and actually set a variable, but, you know, it's asking here, actor object reference, controller object reference. Damage causer is the player character. And it's not going to let me get the uh, anything on there. So we can try get. This is going to refer to ourself. Because we've already gotten our actor location. And it works. It, it looks directly at us. But why the hell won't it actually do anything else? I don't understand why it doesn't like that. It's actually getting the right information here, or else they wouldn't be working. I mean, that's that's obvious, because, I mean, if it wasn't working, it wasn't getting the right information, if I stand over here and shoot, he definitely turns and now sees me and comes after me. So apparently it's definitely working, but it just does not like that reference. They're going directly into that. So, just trying to figure out how we can get rid of the error that shouldn't be an error. Perception. Okay, report as the instigator's location at the moment of the 
event happening. Alrighty then. Let's drag this stuff out of here then, because that apparently looks official and stuff. But, I just want to get that out of the way, and I'll break that link for now. And instigated by, looks like it would plug in there, damaged actor would be self. Damage amount. Well, that would be the damage done. If into location, well, that's still not going to help us out any, because, you know, if we get the actor location, we're still having to drag information from that. So, I don't think that's going to do what we need. So, actor object reference, and if we look here again, damage. I could make a damage AI event, but, you know, that's still the same thing. The damaged actor is not the damage causer. So that's just worthless. Instigated by, let's start from the top here. Not worried about damage type, object reference, um, controller. But we really want from the actor. And doing anything with damage here is not going to be what we need. And just getting location. Again, not going to help us. Destroy actor. That's what I'm getting ready to do here. Damage causer. Um, but that's going to be the same as the other one. If I plug that into there, will you like it that way? I love that I'm trying to get rid of an error that Unreal Engine is encountering that doesn't affect the performance of what I'm trying to do. It just doesn't like it. So, I mean, that's all I'm trying to do here is get rid of their error. So, still works. Still gives an error. Now it gives two errors. And it's all going back to set actor rotation. So why don't you like set actor rotation? That would be the correct thing to do. Because you know, if we try doing set relative rotation, then maybe, but I've only ever used set actor rotation. So set actor relative rotation. And let's dump that. Run that into here and that into there. And why is this any different than what I was already using? Does it make a bit of sense? So you don't like that one either, huh? So 
So, yeah, set actor relative rotation. It still doesn't like it. And it's still on the first one is actually going back to the damage causer. So this mode, this right here, doesn't actually amount to anything. So set actor um, rotation will be what we need. And that's how we're going to get it. Target's going to be self. And this needs to go into here. And we just need to fix what it doesn't like about this crap. Because we just leave that broken it's not gonna know what to get for our target reference here and you know it's just gonna give another error see it doesn't know what the hell happened there hi how are you you're stupid so yeah but it didn't give an error but it doesn't know where to get this location from so without getting that information there's no target there so it needs to get an, a reference to that and it's just being absolutely retarded so we need some way of getting that information anybody got a clue um this is not going to be it here because that's get owner and that's just going to get the wrong reference there I mean it worked but it's still going to be wrong and now you want to give me two errors and it's all in that same area of trying to get this information right here and yeah, well let me get all actors from class um, and we tried damage So let's actually look at our player character, or player base, when we're actually doing all of our shooting here, going all the way through all of this stuff here, and we've got applied damage, and event instigator, we have nothing listed there, or damage causer. So that may be the issue, um, but normally we're going to get this um, damage causer the actor that caused the damage and that's usually like referring to like the grenade that exploded or whatever else um, the player who shot so event uh, instigator controller so why not let's go ahead and get player controller and okay So now we can go back in here and damage causer and instigated by if we just get that and just plug it in that you know get the actual not actual actor location it's going to not like that again <sighs> no errors how about that just by changing that one little thing it fixed it. So, that was a waste of frickin' 20 minutes. No more errors. So that's what it liked, just setting in the player base. Since we didn't have anything plugged into the in instigator, all I had to do was just plug in get player controller, and that fixed the issue. So, that was a long waste of time. But I want to try to condense this down a little bit. Um, let's see here. Now, those two need to be together. 
the mesh reference, really not much we can do there. Our self reference. So that is about as good as we can get it for right now. So at least we know that it's actually working. So we can go in here and shoot our bad guy. He's like, hey, you son of a bitch, you shot me. At some point, we need to actually give this bastard damage. Why he's falling to the ground now, I don't know. Hit him, he saw us now, and he's going to come after us. Not sure why he's falling to the ground now. Because we hit play, and let's go for a longer range target. He's too far away to see us. And his death is good. And his is good. But... Once they go red, they seem to be falling through the damn ground. So, troubleshooting we shall go, but I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one, because it works. Alright, so it's is dead to true, it disables movement, and it destroys it. There's nothing in there that should be causing that to actually do anything. Not a thing. So on C pawn is where they're actually having a problem. And move to the location or actor. It's using the AI controller here. And that's fine. I've got an acceptable radius of 100. That way he's not running directly into me and trying to climb inside of me. And there's that. So there's no reason in here. There's nothing that says hey, um, change your position to something totally different. The trouble is, is, and I don't know why it doesn't actually pull from the root when it gets a location, but what actually is happening is when you look at a player or a bot or whatever else, you look where their pivot point is, it's right there in the midsection. So that's why death animations will sometimes be funny um, because that pivot is if it pivots just a little bit wrong and it could be something to do with our, our rotation here as well because we've injured him and we've told him to turn his rotation um, just for giggles try checking that see if that does anything Okay, he didn't see me right off. His movement looks a little funny. Yeah, I don't like that. That kind of screwed with his physics a little bit. Set actor rotation. You know, if I took that one out and put in the... Oh, shit, I cannot spell rotation and set relative rotation it may just change the, the the mesh and not the entire character so that's why I like using set actor rotation because it should move the entire thing capsule component physics everything should be moving correctly so if I set actor relative rotation and I'm not going to delete the other one I'm just going to grab this one and link it to here Link that to there and that to there. So that's the only real change. It doesn't matter that these are connected to here. It only matters what's actually plugged into the executable. So if I set the actor relative rotation versus just setting the actor rotation. See, now whenever I shoot them, it's still doing it. So that one actually works too. So I'll leave that one in for now. But I'm thinking we still need to do that do once because we don't want it to continue to turn in faces every time we shoot it. 
and I think that's part of what's going on there is it just doesn't like that so pop that do once in there and now only the first time that we shoot him is he gonna turn and look at us and then come after us do I shoot him again it's not gonna mess with his transform so it's not gonna keep trying to snap it forward so we'll leave that in there that was a little bit better and what I didn't pay attention to was whether or not it was affecting his um, death animation. And still is slightly, but close enough for right now. So, he's like, who the hell just shot my ass? So if we look at some of these guys that are farther away, they don't actually have the, um, the, the range. I've got their uh, pawn sensing a lot shorter, so they don't know who actually shot at them. So, let's change our location. He knows. Yeah. Should have stayed your ass outside. Don't like that nature of the city sound that I'm using. I have to change that. So, shoot him now. He's not going to turn anymore, so that's, you know, he turned, because I haven't shot him before. He turned again. I've already shot him once. He turned. They'll all turn whenever I shoot him that first time. But they don't know where the hell the shots are coming from, because they're not in range. So, now he's in range, so... What are you doing, Chico? He just stopped. Well, I got out of his range, so in theory he's supposed to stop. So now I've got two of them chasing me. Let's actually um, run around and let's see if we can lose them. They're still tracking in on me because they've, they've gone to that... Come on. It's weird. The, the tracking stays true the whole time. They're going to keep tracking me no matter what. Right now, they can't see me, even though they, they can't see me. But if I run past them and get behind them, they're dumb enough to like, oh, well, we don't know where he went. I saw him go to the right, but I don't know where the hell he is. So it's not completely a smart system, but it's it's a good start. Well, you're not actually building an AI controller. You got to kind of deal with what you you got to, to work with. So, flashlight. I might tweak the fly, flashlight a little bit. And this is all stuff that was done um, on video with the um, the basic training series, except for what's been done in this video right here. The flashlight, the setting up the character, setting up everything else, was in the basic training series. And I will go back to the basic training stuff, but I just kind of wanted to branch out from that project and start doing some other stuff with it. Kind of having some fun, doing things like the turning. Um, I'll probably set up a grenade system, set up a few other things. You know, the setting up the sniper scope system was good. At some point, I'll make it to where the, the bots will actually begin to fight. But for now, we've got something that works. Can't shoot him because he's out of range in the normal view, but not in scope view. Alright, well, this is at least something... We don't have a sprint feature. So we can't sprint enough to get across there. So, that's actually something relatively quick. If we just come in here and right click and left shift, when we press the left shift button, we want to on press sprint. When we let go, stop sprinting. So, we'll do a press and release on this. 
we'll grab a reference to our character movement and we will set max walk speed and we'll connect that to here and copy it control C control V this is just super simple stuff here um, our normal character movement walk speed max walk speed 600 so I'm gonna put that back in here as 600 so when we let go then we're gonna go back to that and let's go with screw it a thousand howdy howdy how have you been oh oh sorry I didn't pluck you in there Yeah, not my usual time for being up here. So, normal and sprint. Normal, sprint. Oh, shit, my guy. I've never really messed a whole lot with um, first-person stuff, so I really want to get in here and start screwing around with this. At some point, we'll start doing some... Ew. What happened to your, um, your computer? I know my my little buddy, my little um, Algerian buddy, his um, potato, I mean laptop, uh, kicked out on him, and he's very rarely able to get back online because he has to go to other people's computers and stuff, but yeah. I've got a, a spare machine sitting here on the floor that's uh, absolutely lackluster. <laughs> I used it for quite a while and it worked. Yay, now we can run, sprint, and jump from there. So I've got that, uh, oh god, it, it's an absolute, you would think it would be a potato if I, I give you the stats on it. And the video cards, uh, NVIDIA um, GT630. Not as bad as it would think, you would think. Uh, the CPU <laughs> dual core processor and it runs at a blazing hot 2.0 gigahertz this CPU is twice as fast I'm running 4 gigahertz right now on my speed sprint jump So yeah, I I never did. Mine did not die when I stopped using it. But you're talking about four gigs of RAM with a two gigahertz processor and a GT six thirty um, uh, video card. It really wasn't setting any speed records, and um, yeah, it was just not great. I mean, it was it was a decent. I could play GTA five. You know, just like I tell people whenever they're building like an AR-15 rifle, um, know where to spend your or any rifle actually, know where to spend your money to get the most bang for your buck. And whenever I designed this, the layout for this PC that I'm using right now, I know that at some point I wanted to run multi monitors, three maybe four, and my fourth monitor is dead right now, so I'm I'm just I'm suffering with three monitors three 32 inch panels Ugh, it's terrible yeah first world problems right but you know think about everything on your system of what you want to do I really haven't looked at um, yeah see I'm running three 32 inch panels and I've got a, another panel that I can bring in here and set, but I don't have a, a wall mount for it. Um, these three are on a single mount, and they're, the single mount is actually bolted to a 4x4 wall stud. Yes, a 4x4 wall stud. <laughs> so, um, if I bring the, the, four, uh, the other... And I'm using TVs. And I'm, I'm going to tell you why. And honestly... I, I could care less about 4K resolution because 
I'm old as dirt, and hell, half the time I don't even clean my freaking glasses. So, for me, to look at 4K versus 1080p, I'm not going to see enough difference to make it worth the money. So, I don't need to run a super high-end video card with the latest, greatest, coolest whistles and bells. I'm running a GTX 1060, 6 gig. Works perfectly fine for what I do. Although, you know, I'm real engine stuff to gaming to watching YouTube or whatever. It does everything I need. So to keep the panels in a sensible fashion, I knew that if I tried to run three 30 plus inch monitors that are running at 120 hertz, I'm not going to be able to to run everything maxed out resolution wise and really push the limits of it. So I, I looked at price versus uh, performance and what I chose was three 32 inch Samsung TVs that were dumb TVs. No smart features, no built-in Wi-Fi, no built-in whatever. These are just dumb as dirt 32 inch monitors or televisions and I love them. They're 1080p native resolution 60 Hertz yeah I mean if you're not gonna be unless you're doing some really triple and uh, big triple-a title stuff you know, I just turned 50 last month so if you're you're doing some triple-a title stuff and you're really you know cranking out some graphics and shaders and things like that yeah you might need something bigger but for me, running the three 60 hertz panels off of a GTX 1060, I can max out everything to its fullest potential this way and have no problems whatsoever. Because I know that I'm running at 60 hertz on my refresh rate instead of 120 hertz or whatever, because I don't care about the extra. <laughs> It, I'm getting on most things. I don't know what my FPS is on this, but you know, on most AAA games like Far Cry um, Five or whatever the hell it is, and you know, Assassin's Creed '94 and all the the games that I play is um, is actually you know running perfectly fine. 60 to 80 frames per second and I have no complaints. My processor is a no worries. Um, it's 5 o'clock in the morning. I'm not usually awake at this time of day. So um, so what I'm usually doing with um, my, well my GPU is actually my CPU is actually a uh, uh, 8350 black edition AMD and you know what works outstanding um, memory 16 gigabytes of 1866 speed uh, RAM DDR3 why DDR3 instead of DDR4 well to get everything to run smooth and perfect and to, to kind of ma mix and match everything all the way around DDR4 wouldn't have really mattered all that much because I'm not running the latest DirectX version because I'm running Windows 7 and I knew that I'd be running Windows 7 so everything that I, I've got it, it took me six months to get everything you know technology improved by the time it, it took for me to make up my damn mind what the hell I wanted but everything all said and done, though, I was under 750 bucks for a computer that runs really, really well, and um, got three 32-inch monitors that are able to run any AAA title game, even in 5760 by 1080. I was running games like um, Fractured Space at very high resolution and stuff like that get a range of these guys. And, um, no problems whatsoever. It looked absolutely freaking beautiful, too. 
playing some games at 5760 by 1080 looks really cool. So this, like I said, this, this project right here, um, these buildings are absolutely hideous. The the lighting on there, I you know, probably could have done them differently when I was setting them up. But these were all modular buildings made from, uh, this is an individual floor, so I can make these buildings as tall as I want to. Um, they're a 5x5 five five footprint on the, the starter content architecture and I used a four by the, the floor and 400 by 400 walls doors and all that stuff yeah the main focus of this project is for the um, the the basic training series that I'm doing kind of off and on is to actually showcase things like um, what different blueprint features do and stuff like that spinning off from it I'll just kind of keep screw around with things like well there's my my sprint method using things like hitting the C key for comments and then um sprint and then since this is movement you can see I'm using color coordination for all this stuff blue is for vision things green is for my input so now I can come over here choose green and I know that by looking at it it's a movement based section so as you're looking at it like okay if I want anything to do with damage it's in red um, anything to do with movement in green um, yellow is going to be like functions blue is for visual items like setting my view crosshairs flashlight things of that nature so I'm trying to get people to get things like clearing up. So I know that I've changed this right here. I've got health. I want to make sure that I go ahead and give it an, a category and call this player stats. So there's a player stat category. The launcher mode and weapons mode I'm currently not using. Um, I was starting to do that in another video and I deleted it. But I was going to take this same basic player system and since we have the ability to shoot a rifle I was going to be able to like use the mouse wheel and change weapons mode um, right click for the scope but change it from shooting a line trace based weapon essentially using the same weapons model because everything that's in this project is starter content you got um, animation starter pack you've got first person um, um, template you've got the third person template and everything is all free stuff that anybody can get for free after downloading Unreal Engine 4 so you don't need any fancy projects you don't need any fancy asset packs everything that's in here is something you can get 100% for free and go from there so that's the nature of the beast on this one I've actually started working on a, a countless other projects as well. Uh, I've got the Hacksmith project. I've got to rewrite some of the um, multiplayer stuff. I'm actually going to close this project down and open the, the Hacksmith project, which is Hacksmith is a project that is a third person whatever it's actually community um, driven so the community is, is telling me what they want to see in this project and that's what I'm doing with it so kind of show off what we're going with here is Cindy Studio Assets this is a test map it isn't meant to be uh, a completed map we've got um, pickups there and I'll show you what that's for so to start out you got nothing okay but you can actually, and I'll set up an animation to work with this, to where you crouch down and you press E, and you're gathering snow. So with that, you can actually go into, and I'll change views around, and you can throw snowballs. And so this project for this game, this community-based project, is going to be a snowball fight. And you can see you get a little particle effect when the snowball hits. 
the sound effects uh, plays whenever it hits, and then you have a throwing sound as well. But as you're throwing your snowballs, you're you're wearing down your your snowball count, so you get too low, you need to refresh. But you can also come over here and still get some refining due, and this isn't the final mesh, but you can throw it down and quote unquote you're making a um, a fort to hide behind. So whenever you decide you want to crouch, you'll be able to crouch down, and I'll add the crouch animation here um, later on. But you'll be able to crouch and hide behind your little snow fort, and it uses 80 snow, so that would have been snowballs you could have been using, but you can always just sit there and, and keep getting more snow back. And once you put it down, you can't just keep spamming it and, and stacking them up. What will happen is it will stay up for one minute and then it will automatically despawn. And you can see it places nicely. And run over here, hide behind it. Um, so I will do the crouch animation later. And here's the thing is um, we've got the the regular snowballs is nice. But you see the blue bar is actually for your snowballs and your snow count. Red would be your is your health. So when you're getting hit by other snowballs, you actually have a death animation that works. Um, and is, is replicated as well. But you have a yellow bar down there. What the hell is that yellow bar for? It's for throwing yellow snowballs. <laughs> And when you run out, you can no longer, of course. So you can come over here, and there are drinks. You can pick up drinks to, quote unquote, refill that meter. So that um, that yellow bar is your Wizzo meter. And if you're throwing them, and you're out here, I got to respawn set pretty quick. You're running around, and you see these bottles. There's liquor bottles. Run over to alcohol, and it's like, holy shit! Your view gets blurry, and you're like, okay, I can't see. Um, I might do a drunk effect on walking, like reverse it. If you try to go forward, you go right. If you go try to go right, you go backwards. You just kind of, you know, screw with the character a little bit. So you're you're mixed up whenever you drink the alcohol. You don't know what's going on. You can't control your character. But you've refilled your meter, so you're you're full on pee again. So you can actually start throwing more yellow snowballs. You can see our fort disappeared. So I can go over here now and. Um, yeah, I gotta work on a few more things on that one, on the character, because things that I had working just fine are no longer working, so, and, and something as simple as, um, deploying the fort, um, and to have it fully replicated and everything else, your snow collect is replicated, fort spawn area, so... That should be replicated as all, and I had that replicated, and it just keeps unchecking itself. Um, and see, when you're deploying the fort, I don't know why I have, oh, yeah, got that one after this one saying that it's no longer deployed. And what you're trying to do is find out here if the fort is deployed. I gotta redo these uh, variable system in here. So it's setting here, it's checking to see if fort is already deployed. If it is not, and that should be working correctly, if it's not then you can deploy another one. But then here, for right now, I'm going to I'm gonna break that at reference. Just because it's not working correctly for some reason. I don't know if I just need to put it in a different location. Probably need to put it right there. But it was working. was working just fine. And I'll have to come back in here and fix it again. So you can't sit there and just... And it's not working. Okay, because I've got this plugged in there. And yeah, so that that's what it was. Is it's contradicting, contradicting itself. So set fort deployed. 
as true. And I need to go back into the fort blueprint and put its lifespan in there because I'm being stupid. Alright, so there it's there, but um, I guess, and I was trying to set up a damage system where it can take damage, but the set lifespan, it's going to automatically delete itself after one minute, and I need it to also, at that point, um, cast to, and let's make sure that we're getting it right. Let's actually do a sequence node here. And try to run it that way. Run a delay of 60 seconds here. You know what? Screw that. Let's just delay on begin play. And let's put that at 60 seconds. And we need to then cast to our player. And this is not going to work the way I want it to. Because this will affect everybody, probably, and not just the person deploying it. So, like I said, I got to go back. And I just couldn't sleep. I, I laid down and I just couldn't sleep. I've been having some respiratory issues lately, and it's screwing with my sleep apnea, and I'm lucky to get three hours of sleep now. I, I don't know if it's just a, because I've had a cold. I've been trying to wean myself off of the cold beds, and apparently I need to get back on them again. Uh, let's try get owner. It may not like that, but... What I want to do is set fort deployed as false. And from there, I want to destroy actor. Yeah, it's just one of those things where me and sleep don't get along too well. So let's come over here and uh, oh because I'm being stupid um, I need to harvest snow first before I can place down my snow fort and there was much rejoicing so there's my snow fort actually can go back over here and harvest more snow so if I want to sit there and do that or I can throw yellow snowballs. I gotta fix the camera situation in, in, in third person. Throw yellow snowballs, the regular snowballs. And let's get drunk. If you drink and continuously running into liquor bottles, it compounds the amount of blurriness. So the drunker you get, the more blurry it gets. But it doesn't add to the, the time effect of it. So let's see if this actually goes away after a minute because I can't I can't deploy another one right now so because that one's up and drink some sports drinks sodas you got a cup of coffee you got liquor you got yellow snowballs you got regular white snowballs yes the the model here for the uh, snow fort is absolutely hideous but you know what it was just to to get it functional because one of the viewers said hey how about if you gather snow and if you get enough snow you can you can actually build a snow fort so that was the thing and I wanted to um, at least get it operational to the point where players can't spam them so you can't just sit there and keep hitting a key and spawning them everywhere or spawning 30 or 40 of them so if that doesn't go away here in just a few moments it should automatically delete itself after a minute. Come on, you want to go away. You want to go away. 
I will throw yellow snowballs at you. I will throw regular snowballs at you. <laughs> the health system for it is just not working. I'll fix that later on. Alright, it doesn't appear that it's going to vanish. I needed a sound effect and that was the, the first one that I found sound wise. Yeah, it's not, not undeploying. So... I just wanted it to damn work! So let's dump that. And let's try the sequence again. This stuff can run off of either branch, it doesn't matter. But I want to go ahead and set lifespan. I know that works. I just want to not have a damn snow fort last forever. Snow collected fort. Okay. Fort deployed is true on this custom event. Um. That's the server, that's the multicast, that's server. So, let's gather some snow. That should be enough. I can deploy it. So, we'll just sit there and waste a bit more time waiting to see if it'll actually undeploy itself. But yeah, I just want to show this one right here. And you may be noticing that there is actually um, ad templates, you know, ads running here. And there's another billboard over here that's cycling through a couple of images. One here, one over there. Different sizes. It's something I'm working on. Um, I get a lot of people who want me to spend hours and hours and hours of time actually assisting them and helping them with their projects and walking them through issues and so forth but they're not able to pay for assistance so what I'm trying to do with that is I'm trying to get my damn retirement plan together you're not deleting why are you not deleting you should be deleting Let's go back into our fort here and delete all this shithola. Because this was working. And the only reason why I want to put the rest of the stuff in there was so that I could spawn another one. So let's grab our shithola, spawn one, and it should go away now. So yeah, like I was saying on these, is um, if you watch, it's actually cycling through um, advertisements. These are just templates. This was, was a, a test platform. Um, see, it, it's just sample photo uh, images. Then it goes into some other, like, Black Rifle Coffee Company, um, Cindy Studios, Castle Crypto. It's going through just a, a couple that um, I just set up here as examples. So what will end up happening is... I've got a project, and I'll skip to that one here in just a second, and I'll briefly touch on that, and then I'll probably get out of here, because, you know, it is, you know, almost 6 o'clock in the morning, 20 minutes still. But essentially what will happen is, for people who can't afford to pay me to spend 3, 4, 5, 6 hours, holy hell, I didn't set a lifespan stupid ass sitting there waiting for something to disappear that has no lifespan time put in it so instead of them actually being able to pay me directly um, they would I would give them this project not this one but the other project I'm talking about and essentially all they have to do is if they have a big wide open area, I've got jumbo signs and 
you can actually go back in and resize them to whatever size you need. It's like the ones that are on the walls here. These are just sample ones that I was putting together. But um, you know, I'll show you any other project. So this should actually work for deleting itself. The set lifespan thing always works. Until I'm actually wanting to work, you know, now. I had everything working. Replication was fine. And then suddenly something happens and every damn thing broke. And I, I'm to the point where, honestly, whenever I, I get problems like that, there you go. It despawned. Yay. And then I just needed to trigger back onto the player saying, hey, at this point, um, you need to go ahead and set Fort Deployed defaults. So can I run this after set lifespan so let's actually try it here and cast to player underscore base which is our player character and I want to get the owner I want to know I want the owner of who placed a fort um, and change his or her variable at that point. And no, you're stupid. Drag off from there. Set fort. Deployed. False. So, one more quick test and then we'll get the hell out of this one. But yeah, so essentially they will go in and they'll place my, my ad system in their game in their maps. They put the billboards down, they put the videos, they put the radios... Uh, or the radio, I'll have Beefalo Bart TV and Beefalo Bart radio station and Beefalo Bart billboards. You know, and all you do is you just drop these into your map. They're just blueprints. Size them to whatever size you need, and then you know let it be. And then essentially, what'll happen is advertisers will be paying me to put their ads on these billboards on the radio station and on the TV station and I'll, I coordinate all the ads I do all the the background stuff and to make it simple these ads don't actually run on your game or on your computer they actually run and they, they pull the images and the videos and the sounds all those come directly from the internet and I control all of those so all you do is you just drop this TV in place, or you drop this radio in place, or you drop this billboard in place, and there you go. Do your thing. Okay, that went away. And let's gather some more snow. And, okay, go to hell. I'll fix this problem another time, whether it's not almost 6 in the morning. So, um... Yeah, that's as simple as that. They just drop the stuff in there, size it whatever size they need to fit their map correctly. And no, I don't want people to size it to negative 24, so it's not visible. But essentially like this, these are um, a vertical sign and a horizontal sign. So when you hit play, there is no player character. It doesn't interfere with anything else. You just drop this this folder called BBG Ads into your, your project and then drop these signs somewhere in, the, in your your maps and they, they cycle the the images are actually coming from from online the same thing with sound same thing with video and then if you want to put it in there all you need to go do is go into the blueprints folder if you want a horizontal sign they're big they're 1920 by 1080 so you can actually just drag it in here and wow that's great they have collisions doesn't matter how big they are, the image is going to look good unless you're right on top of it. Um, if you want to do it as a billboard off in the distance, that's cool. One alternative, you can actually grab these things, and if you want to leave them large, drag them down like that, and put them on the ground. So let's actually go to our details panel. Let's go to... Zero, 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 and you can actually 
Oh, if you want to, use it on the damn floor. So now as you're you're going through your map, you can have a color changing floor, but preferably have people actually put these things in here to where they can see them. This horizontal board right here is scaled to one quarter. So like I said, all you do is you drag it in here. If you don't want it to be that big, you size it to 0.1, 0.1, and it's a lot smaller. And they are solid objects. And the way that they work is you can actually, if you already have your own um, billboards, you want them to work that way. The blueprints are set up to where you actually have the frame. And now these are, are configured to where the frame itself has two materials applied to it. And, you know, the frame itself is black. And the material that's on the inset of this frame is actually going to be um, you know, showing the actual material of what what you need to see. So these ads will run. I I handpick the ads. I handle all the ads, all the videos, all the the radio station stuff, and you just plug the stuff into your your game to say thank you for me helping you to um, to build your game since you can't afford to pay me because you know my time should be worth something too there's guys that I've helped them I've spent 15 20 hours in a week or more helping them with their projects and shouldn't I be able to, to get um, compensated for my time for giving up that much or more of my my day or my week for them to help them with their game that I'm not going to profit from other than just being profiting for me internally from knowing that I'm being a good person and helping other people. That's all well and dandy, but shit, I, I need some money in the bank. <laughs> you know? I got bills to pay too, you know? So by doing this same system like, like this, or if you just want to say thank you, even if you just wanted to help poor old Beefalo Bard out, then uh, once I finish this project, you you voluntarily just add this to your, your project. Say thank you for that old bastard that sits here and makes terrible YouTube videos and gives really bad advice. So, essentially, that's it. You, you, you get this, you add this to your project, and then you go into it, go to the Blueprints folder, and poof, drop the signs in. The radios themselves and the TVs themselves will have an automatic playlist. Um, and if you look at open says me the theater project is one I've been showing quite a bit of as well and now I can't show the actual television in here because I put it into my scene simply because I love the song so I let it play while I'm sitting here working on stuff anyway but um, as a prime example on this test map here you why the hell is my camera set on fucking seven alrighty that was fun move just a wee bit and go 14 miles um, and yes the merry-go-round does work um, you come over here you can sit down and this will actually play a music video. I'm going to hit play for just a second and you can see that the video is changing on there and I'll go ahead and stop it because you know this is what's actually playing the sound attenuation is this box so if I'm back here and the video is playing stay way back over here yeah I'm going to get a freaking copyright thing on this now you can, I don't know if you can see, but um, the video is actually playing. It's kind of a dark video to begin with, but the, it will just start playing. It has sound to it. This is a sound attenuation range. So once you're out of that range, you can't hear it. You, the closer you get, the louder it gets. Um, so all you have to do is just grab the television, drop it into your scene. If you've already got your own television, 
than in the other project, the, the BBG ads project. There will be a temporary television frame put in there, but like this is a Cindy Studios television, and all I got to do is just drag it into the scene, and it works. Um, same thing with the radio. Now the radios that I've got set up, oop, gotta get rid of that TV. Um, when I come into the map, I just put a radio in there, but I can actually hit um, and open up a remote, hit play music. And then exit the menu. It actually will play from a playlist of music, and I'll be able to house that playlist online. And I'll try to come up with some that are just commercials only, or some that's actually um, different styles of music, but it has to be, you know, copyright free and that kind of crap for now. So you can actually, um, Skip songs. You can pause, play, and that kind of stuff. Um, so I just pause it, and then if I want to, I can come back to it later. But all you have to do is to get it to work is not put a radio or speakers or anything else. It's that. It is this little sound object. That blueprint, you just drop it into your freaking map, and you're done. So, unless you manually turn it on, you can set it to, to begin play and start playing. Mine's set up on the menu, but you can set it to play on begin play. And, um. <laughs> yes, by automatic medic, medic. Um. So, you can actually set it to begin play, and it just starts playing music whenever you first go into it. Um. Come over here and, and have a seat. And yes, all this multiplayer replicates. Except for the, the medic bot. I haven't finished that yet. It's kind of boring with no music on there. But she'll let randomly just start throwing dollar bills in the air. And the, the sit down, just like that also, is also a, a random blueprint. Um, you can see that you can't just interact anywhere, but... About damn time you show up. Ain't seen your ass in a week. Missed all the other cool stuff. And I'm going to do this just for Skippy's sake here. Hey, Skippy. <laughs> That's just one of the emotes there. It runs for 24 seconds. You can't stop it. You can't move. Once you do it, you're, you have to be committed to it. I love that one. It's just a little stupid thing. You just hit the thing and he starts doing it. But if there's music playing, you can just go ahead and just dance. And, <laughs> and you can stop dancing whenever you want to with that one. Um, four, yeah, you can fly around. <laughs> that it was just something that I was being stupid. I was bored and screwed him with one of the um, the animations. So, and all it was was I changed the root location of it. I'm like, what what happens if you do it this way? And sure enough, when you change the root that way, it's like... <laughs> so it looks like he's flying. And you can turn that on and off whenever you want to. Um, but yeah, even though I didn't change anything right here... Um, one more project here, which was the, um, the other one I was doing as part of the other other series is um, what the hell was it? We got Hacksmiths going on, we got the ad going on, we got the theater project going on, the training project going on. Um, so many freaking projects going on at one time here. Another FPS project that I was kind of toying around with. And I'll show this one it is totally nowhere even close to being done yet. But Skippy, this is for you. Uh, not for you. I'm saying just to, to like slap you in the face is something you were, you were asking about. 
Um, this is a first person. Look at the finger. Look at the finger that's holding the weapon. Look at the hand that's holding the weapon. This is a first person template. And the animations and the hand. What do you notice about it? Let's open the player. Uh oh. Those are not UE4 mannequin arms. Huh. How about that? That's kind of weird. Those kind of look like Cinti Studios arms. And a first person. And it's just a set of arms. There's no other body. It's just a set of arms. See there? They're capped off even. Yeah. So this project I was kind of screwing around with that playing around with the um, the arms for the Cindy Studios character and was kind of messing around with that so yes it is possible to to do it that set of arms is actually for the the sci-fi pack so and it was like a limited release on that not everybody saw it and was able to grab it and get it before it went away Except me. Because naturally, you know, I had to. Um, what the hell else was I going to show you guys here? Siege, that was my one hour speed build. And I wanted to try to create an entire game with no real assets. Just create a game in an hour. Yeah, if you're doing single player changing levels, that's no problem. Multiplayer changing levels, that's a problem. Um, let me just go back to this one for right now. If you want to change levels, I mean, if you're doing single player, it's no problem whatsoever to change from one level to the next. I mean, that's something that I can do really quickly. So I was like. Our guy's here, I shoot him, it pissed him off. Oh, I pissed him off because I shot him, and now he's coming after me. Shoot him, kill him, okay, lovely. Go into sniper mode. Oh, you th oh now you see me. Oh, this is, um, honestly, every bit of this project has been done on video uh, while streaming. So you can always go back and just, you know, follow along and do it yourself. Oh, he saw me. Yeah, multiplayer changing maps. It's like this is this map right here. Okay, this is my level one. Okay. Also got a test map. Nothing on it. So, we'll use this as an example. I come in here and play. Okay, nothing here. Add the particle effect whatever you hit. Um, you can play with you can play with yourself. What? <laughs> so let's actually grab this. Let's Control C, Control V, and a little platform right here. So we did teleporters in another video, and that's one way of doing things. Is when you set up there's world composition versus. Um, Yeah, multiplayer is where the problem is going to run into because what happens is when you load to another map, you're leaving the existing session that you were in and then you're going to ha not be able to come back to the session when you come back. So leaving a map, you when you load level, that load level functionality, which this is what I'm getting ready to show here, I'm going to save this double my little walking area. I'm going to go ahead and create a temporary asset. And I think I've got a temporary folder. Uh, do, 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 do. Assets. Nope. I'll go ahead and make one. Um, temp. And I'm going to make a temporary asset here and it's going to be a blueprint actor and world 
port. So this is going to take me from this map and it's going to put me into level one. So shits and grands, let's put a cube in here and let's take that cube and change the Z height to 0.1. Come in here and add another component, which is a box collision. And we'll just raise that up just a hair. And we'll do 1.5, no, not 4, but 1.5 by 1.5 by 0.1. Good enough. So we just want a little bit of a pad there. Hell, we'll, we'll do it at 0.5. So we just got a little collision there that we can work with. Compile, save, come in here, delete all this crap. Right click on our box collision, on component begin overlap, and let's go ahead and cast to player underscore base, which is my player character, or you can use whatever your player character might be, and then um, open the level. And we need to get the name of our level, which is if you can't, if you're like me and you can't remember exactly how you spelled something, come back out there. There's the level. I'm going to hit F2, Control C, left click somewhere else, and then now I can come back in here and Control V. This is not multiplayer, but if it was, in the options panel right here, you want to type in Listen. But this isn't multiplayer, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so my little world teleporter here, I'm going to go ahead and... Yeah, there's a lot of complicated stuff in that blueprint. Um, yeah, there's a lot of complicated nodes. You have to, like, put one in there. And, yeah, it's... Well, I'm sorry, you have to put two nodes in there. Super complicated. Um, so now I want to come in here and save all. This is a test map, so come in here and play. And, uh-oh, what happened? Huh. Weird. I teleported. I went to a whole new map. Hit escape, come back. Oh, well, there's the map that I was working on. So, yeah, it's kind of complicated to set up a, um uh open level thing you'd probably want a transition map and make it look much more pretty than that but um yeah yeah i like to look at things i like the fact that they change colors whenever they they see you but yeah, that's, you know, that's it for an open level. You know, teleporters are super simple, but you know, pretty much the same thing. Multiplayer, and that's the problem with multiplayer and loading levels, why you can't do it, is because for some unknown reason, the powers that be says that open level must have this extra crap in here, and... Um, it will actually leave your session. It will destroy your session. So if you and I are on the same map and you teleport to a different map, you leave the same session that we were in before. I'm still on that same session, but when you take a teleporter to come back to this level, you're not going to see me because you've left my session. And now you're kind of screwed because now when you get to that new map, you pretty much, if you don't have a a preemptive on the begin play of the map saying um, now console commands really not gonna work because what has to happen when you're in a multiplayer environment is and this is not a multiplayer project so um, let me actually open one that is let's say um, Oh, what's a good one that I don't mind screwing up a little bit? Well, Hacksmith, I gotta fix all kind of crap in that one, but. 
MP test. Seems logical. Not one that I plan on keeping anyway. So, um, what you end up with is you're in a session. When you're actually in playing, um, let's go to test map. All right, here's the test map. Just happen to have Cindy characters. Don't ask me what I was doing in here. I have no clue. Just playing with um, constraints. And yes, this is using four. You can actually get on and make it into a tilting platform. And yes, you can interact with really big balls. If you like playing with balls, then you can play with your balls here. And they're blue, so, you know, yeah, I'm going to leave that alone. So, the point of what you're asking is, when you're in the example of the lobby map, okay, if you've noticed how whenever I do mine, if you look at the level blueprints, there's, there's nothing in it. Hey, ass clown. Editor preferences. Why do you why do you have to piss me off and lose my fucking settings? You shit fucking program. I'm sorry, did I say that out loud? So if you look at the level blueprints, hey, it's where it should be. There is nothing in this one. But if you go to the main menu map, which is where the game actually starts, when you're you teleport to this one, what I've added into the level blueprints here is events begin play, get player controller, destroy session. So when you come to this map, it destroys your session because if you're the host and you leave and you come back to this main menu, all your clients are stuck in that other session. And if they go to the main menu and that's not in there, they're not able to host or join any other games. So I had to put that in there for the main menu. So if you go back to the main menu, it destroys a session so that you can then be able to host and join other sessions. So you're not screwed. Um, all right, so information you have to have. And I don't want to get in depth in showing a bunch of my blueprints and shit like that. But in the main menu widget, it's got all my connection bullshit. As an example, this is um, getting the player controller, the player name, unique net ID. You get into all this data right here. Go connect to Steam Dummy, um, the Steam Avatar, things of that nature. When you're dealing with the advanced sessions, um, it gives you more flexibility of getting more data from Steam and that kind of stuff. But um, just as an example, go into my assets folder and whatever gadgets, I just want something. Now, floor tile, why? I don't know, nothing in here. Viewport, we were just creating a floor tile. Uh, this was an experiment on something else, so. If you type in advanced, create advanced session, okay? So when you're actually creating a game, you're you're getting some basic information. Public connections. How many people do you want to join? Let's narrow it down to 25. Private connections, zero. But if you want private, then you could set like four. So there's always certain people with certain permissions can always get in. Use LAN? Uh, no. Um, not really need for that. Allow invites. And this is Steam Advanced Session stuff is dedicated server you can select that so they can and this is where you, you've these are booleans here so you can check this and make it a dedicated server but it doesn't necessarily make it a dedicated server it's just part of it use presence um, anti-cheat protected yes or no should advertise so like should you let other people know that this game is available to join um, use stats. Yeah, you can turn on all these features here. Player controller. Okay, we'll get player controller. Um, extra settings. You would actually um, 
you'd want to break that array. There is not anything on here right now. Um, so th there's nothing being fed into this. And then on success, you can load your map. On failure, you can go screw yourself. And from right here, while you're trying to do this, you can, you're, you're doing this. This is a pass through on this top node. This just keeps passing through from here. On success is, well, on success. If it actually completed it and then went right through. But it's the information that you plug into on this side that's going to help you out with this and being able to set those settings in here. Set the settings. That makes sense, right? Um, again, looking back at my widget, you can see all this stuff. And I want to give away all my shit here because when making the server, um, you're getting the server name, you're setting the game name, you're going to make array and plug that into your extra settings because you're going to need that later on. And the level you're going to go to. Notice it's a listen server. Right? All that's lovely. So you can start putting in this other information like player controller, get player controller. That one's kind of easy, easy to figure out. Um, extra settings and the make array. You can then start actually making elements to put in here for your extra settings, like your name, your your server name, uh, things like that. So you're really gonna have to sit there and soak up all that. I'm sure there's some good tutorials on, on using advanced sessions. But if you look, your session, you can update session. The session is the the server that you're actually on, so to speak. So find friend section sessions. So if you're hosting, you know, you're my friend, I can find your sessions. In section a session on my menus last time oh like I'm selecting which one to actually go to um, I don't have that so um, you click on host and whenever you host a game you want to actually then be able to yeah okay yeah sorry okay Let's actually play in a standalone game so you can see what the menu system looks like and what he's talking about here. And I hope you brought a dry pocket because if, you know, I'll cut this short here because I'm going to have to pee really soon. Um, multiplayer host game. And right here under server creation, you had make, enter the thing, and then I had other maps here. So there's several different ways you can go about setting up that. So when the host is hosting the game, the host can actually pick which map they want to to go into. And I've got other projects that um, was set up. Do I not have Steam running? No, I just restarted my computer not long ago. Um, creating that, and I'm just going to create a um, temporary widget. And when you're doing that, you're setting up your UI. Uh, you've got checkboxes, and well, here's the thing: with a checkbox, you can turn it on, you can turn it off. You get checked state and so like that. And I've I've used the the checkbox style. Um, yeah. Well, what you're gonna have to do is, if you think about it when you're you're creating something you can create a button and when you press this button it selects the map that you want and um, let's put text on our button and we'll just call this level one okay and well we see our buttons not big enough so let's make it big enough so if I select level one and screw it, we'll just anchor it to center. 
Actually, let's leave it anchored to the upper right, because I don't give a damn. <laughs> so if you select, okay, I want to go to level 1. How do you know that you're going to go to level 1? How do you know that it actually worked? Um, you have to be able to, to see a visual reference. Um, you can set up your button stage. There's so many different ways you can create the selection process. But essentially what you're going to do is um, I can delete this and go to button and on clicked. And what you're wanting to do is set up the system here and you'd have a variable called, um, let's say, map to use and make that into a string and compost and save and with this right here you can drag this in here and set map to use and we would do level one so you put your map name inside here now this is not actually committing and launching the game and going into it um, so if you look at your designer, you want to know that you've actually selected this. And I'm actually going to Control-C, Control... Oh, eat a dick! Let's add a second button in. And we'll call this... Level 2. So we just have a little bit of variance back and forth. So we hit... Um, well, now do I have three buttons here? It said there I had three buttons. Okay, this is where Unrelenting 4 is doing unusual shit. Um, there's an extra button hidden in here somewhere. And it's not going to let me delete it, and it doesn't exist anywhere. So, same thing here. We want to set that variable in here, set your map to use, and we're going to change this from the to level 2. So we're setting the, the variable here for a map to use that way. And um, on that, if we wanted to be able to say, okay, yeah, it's just not here. It doesn't exist. We want to create a text. And in that text, we want it to be our text for whatever the name is of the map to use. So we'll just use this um, map to load until we actually select a, a map. It's not going to have anything in there because we don't have anything in here for map to use other than it saying map to use there is no value to it so we could actually just quickly come in here and do a binding create binding and let's get a reference to this guy and plug that into here it'll automatically do a two text and there when we're actually changing that value uh, value by pressing our buttons right here so this is going to report back what the actual thing is and since I want this to actually show up let's actually go to our player and wow I got a lot of stuff in here oh let's place a tile never mind construction quit uh, event graph there we go all sorts of Shiite E, C, whatever. Um, I just want to create keyboard one. So we hit the number one key. I want to create a widget. And then that widget is going to be what the hell was it? Test. And then so this is just so I can get the damn thing visible. And we want to add to viewport. 
and we need a mouse cursor so we need to um, set in input to UI only and we want to get a reference to our player controller and widget to focus and we want to set show mouse cursor here and set that to true I don't care about being neat I'm just slapping shit together um, that's lovely so if we actually go in here and go to whatever map anything damn it would you f fucking stop being stupid so you hit it and there it is right here we now level one level two level one level two so we're setting that so we can see it a little bit better let's actually go into our widget and let's add in an image change the z order to negative 436 and let's change the color to that anchor that to full screen get rid of all the bullshit and there we go now we have shit on our screen we can actually see so when we hit our buttons what's happening is I click on button one it's gonna say change to level one I click on button two it's gonna to set to there and then at that point whenever you're ready to commit and actually load into a map let's create another button let's drag its punk ass over here let's throw some text on it and change that text to um, start game and rescale the button as big as you frickin want I want to start the game compost and save go in here and we already have that one selected so actually we just need to do that so when we click on this button we want to load or excuse me open level and when we open level we want to make sure we type in listen and what is the name of the map that we're going to go to we do this we're in test map so we need to go to lobby map f2 control c click off click here put the name of the map there and actually I'm going to change this to this and we're going to put none we don't we don't have a map so map 2 is actually going to be the lobby map and yeah we could do f2 control c So even though we're already on this map, we're on the test map, and we have a lobby map, look at our designer, we need to now get this right here, get map to use, and do that. So all we're doing is plugging in map to use into there, and so we compost, we save, and we need a way of closing this menu down if we don't want to do anything with it so we can just create another button here and throw some text on it and that text is exit menu resize the button and go in here this is the ugliest freaking thing ever um, unclicked we want to exit this so we just want to cast to player underscore base because we need to get our game mode back to get player controller we need to 
set input mode to game only. Need to do that. We need to set show mouse cursor to false. And then we need to remove from parent. So that'll close the, um, the thing down. If we wanted to exit game, it's a really complicated thing. We'd have to come from this button and um, uh, no, exit didn't work. Um, no, unclicked. End match, in turn, in session. Oh, it's so complicated. Quit game. And then plug that into your player controller. But we don't want a quit game. We actually just want to close the menu, compile, save. The fuck is your problem? Oh, excuse me. You're just going to be a douche knuckle, and you don't like that reference, but I got to have that anyway. So get player. You know what? Eat a dick. I don't need you at all. I don't need you. Go away. You give me shit. I ain't got time for your shit. Not that I could go to sleep right now anyway, but. So we're playing. And we want to pull up a menu. We want to go to level one, which is a test map. Start game. It loads us into the map. We're here. I want to go to level two. And start game. There we go. We're in the lobby map. Like this. I don't. I don't want the menu up. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I do. I want to go back to level one, which is my test map. There we go. And if I wanted this text to actually say what it was actually doing, um, well, first off, level one, we need to actually label our damn buttons. Level one was gonna go to what? Just made that shit look weird, and that's gonna go to our test map. So we'll change this to test map button. No, this is not multiplayer. I'm telling you, this is how you would do it in your main menu so that when you're doing this, it will actually work that way. And this goes to our test map. And fucker, whenever I hold down the shift key and hit key, you do a freaking capital whenever I tell you to do it. And the other one is actually going to lobby map, so map to load, no, level two. This is lobby button and open your ass back up. You're gonna go to lobby map, that's that, and map to load just shows up there and this is start button and this is exit always label your buttons because when you're in graph view now you can say oh well this is the exit button this is the lobby button this is the image here is actually my background or this is my whatever so yeah you know what the hell you're looking at. You know what you're working with. But this only works from... This is this is what I said. This is how you set up your main menu functionality. For your main menu widget, you would add all this stuff in here. I don't need you. Go away. Um, to add that functionality in. To modify my, my menu or set up your own menu or whatever else. As you're setting that up in your main menu map this would automatically be there whenever you you click on host game then you could do whatever you want to create this 
series of switching. I want to go to the test map. Okay, there it is, test map. Lobby map. Okay, there it is. Start game. Would I do that? No, it looks kind of cheesy. I wouldn't do it that way. I'd use checkboxes. And checkboxes can suck at times because you have all these different things you have to do. And, oh, you fucker, get your ass back up there. I'm clicking on you. So, checkboxes. Um, you can use sliders. You can put a slider into your, your thing here. And you can slide the thing across, and and it changes the name of the map to, to load based on the positions of the slider. Um, you can put in checkboxes. And the thing about a checkbox is when you put a checkbox in, you have the state. It's either unchecked, checked, or undetermined. And focus on those two, unchecked and checked. If you want a whole video based on doing UI stuff using these right here, um, then, you know, that's something else. Um, this checkbox is called checkbox. Where the hell is it? Checkbox 77. So, <laughs> you got the event. On check state change you can say is checked and then run that into a branch and like that run a branch here and run is checked click that into here and if it is true that it is checked then um, go eat shit and then if it's um, not then you eat a, a dick you know you tell it what you want to do post that event right there on your check state but what happens is now is when you have 42 maps and 42 checkboxes if this one is checked and then you check another one it's going to be checked also so just to kind of look at it right here we're in here in our menu you got our checkbox right there you check it and okay it's checked what do you want to do with it once it's checked well if you're doing this and you want it to uncheck the other five that you've got then yeah so in essence what you end up with is uh, what the hell is that project that I had in here that was already a completed project where I had multiple maps but essentially like that, that that's not something for a quick explanation because you have to call references back to all the ones that are there and set their values to unchecked so if you get on at a reasonable time of the night instead of five o'clock in the damn morning it will run you through all of it No, that's in the multiplayer. If you you play one of the the any of the damn things using my freaking shit, my multiplayer template, and you know you're using that, you want to add that functionality to have multiple maps. It's easy to do, but it takes a little time to set it up to have the method that you want for picking your map. You can have a button with an image on it of a frog's penis. And if that's what you want it to click to be able to get it to load the map, then there you go. Just saying, is um, UI stuff. I will do a whole couple of videos just on UI stuff over the next day or so. I'm just looking for that project that, um, let's see if it's this one. Don't know. We'll look. There's one of them that I had that, um, and this is the actual the shooter shooter demo. So go into it, multiplayer host. That's not it. Plus, I'm not on Steam anyway, so just want to look at the actual game.
Oh, I think this one had, um, this Paragon shit actually had more than one map. Multiplayer is a whole different beast. I, I've explained that. So like this. Lobby map, test map, rocket map. Rocket has nothing to do with Rocket Mania or whatever the hell his name is. This was just because the main thing in the middle of the map looked like a fucking rocket. So if I want to go to the lobby map and you're using the checkbox system, then if I check this one, it now sets this as the map to load, but it sets the state of this checkbox to unchecked. If I check this one now, you see the check mark went to here. I, if I, I can check and uncheck all day long, but as soon as I check something, it sets that variable to the map to load. But whenever I click on this one and say, oh, I don't want to go to that map, I want to go to this one. So it has to set and make sure that whenever I select this one, it has to uncheck every other freaking one. If you've got three, no problem. you got three references of or two references of ones to set their status to unchecked. Um, if you have 25, then you have 24 of them at the end of your line that each one you have to say status unchecked, status unchecked. And it's a pain in the ass, but it's nice. You know, you can go through here and you can check to see, you know, like that. You can check it, and it's, it's great. if you, you can uncheck it or check it here change your mind, go to this one. It's a nice, easy way to doing it, but um, it doesn't change this right here. I would actually have it say lobby map here. And even if I uncheck that, it's still, I've already selected it, so I've already set the variable. So if I change it to this one, this would change to test map. So you always can see with the visual here and here of what you've actually gone in there and um, selected for your map to load. So, not hard to do. Just saying. And this is for initially creating the multiplayer session. So the host has this ability to do this. What happens now is if you are in this map and decide you don't want to play this map anymore, the host goes back and wants to change the map. If you just change the map in the session, the other players of the game are not currently getting that same information. I would have to rewrite a bunch of this code that I've got in here for the multiplayer stuff for it to, on the fly, be able to change everybody's session all at the same time. And I can't force them into another session that I'm creating and setting variables. I can't do it that way. I probably could, but it'd take me quite a bit of work. So. If I go back to the main menu and then it kicks everybody else out and then we're all at the main menu, I can create a new session, you can rejoin. But whenever it comes to actually setting up a... These work almost like a dedicated server, but the host, the person who says, I'm going to host a game, and everything operates off of their internet system and their connection. Everybody is basically connecting to you. You are the host. You are the server. So you are the, the core of what's going on. And if you leave, well, you just shut down the session till you kill everybody else. So, <sighs> we'll get around to doing more of that stuff later. And the reason why I don't do a lot of videos on this is because, well, I'm trying to sell my freaking Steam template. And if I show you how to do all this shit, then that's in, on a YouTube video, it's going to give away my lazy, I mean, my, my awesome program on setting up a multiplayer template. And this shit works. It works bulletproof. Works all the damn time. I'm not currently connected to Steam. And it tells me, go connect to Steam dummy. I'm not going to connect to Steam right now because I don't give a shit. <laughs> but we could do a private session later on and doing that if you want um, I honestly just um, I don't want to get into it right now on the stream but it's almost 7 o'clock in the morning
Well, it's up to the customer to actually set their map list. How am I supposed to know how many maps you have? <laughs> or you can say, hey, Beef, do this shit for me real quick. I want five maps. I want four maps. I want 12 maps. Tell me how many maps you need. I'll make the fucking thing. It'll take me a half hour. Since you've already got my template anyway, all you have to do is just change the damn widget. Or you could actually work on my damn projects and, and instead of your own shit and then, you know, just incorporate that stuff in as well. We're working on a parallel project and you can just add your shit to mine and, you know, you know you're fucked if you want 20,000 maps. I ain't doing that shit, but... You were working on my shit. You get work done a lot faster. Um, yep, this stream's been over two hours. Um, yep. Actually, you've gotten to the point with this um, training project that um, it's actually starting to get casual fun to play. One of the next things I'll start working on is um, bot damage system. Because right now, what we have is we have a first person shooter, we have the ability to sprint and walk normal. We got a regular cross here. If you shoot somebody, they get pissed off, they turn around, and they, they come after you. But you can kill them. You got a sniper mode. No problem. You can actually have kinetic energy with your bullets when they hit. They have a particle effect when they hit. I just shot him. We got his attention. But he's like, who the hell just shot me, you son of a bitch? I was out of range for him. Now that I'm in range, he turns red and he's active. He's going to come after me. So the next thing to do is actually give them the ability to shoot back. We want them to fight back. And we'll try to do it as simple as possible, but, um, but yeah, so we got that. Right click goes into your, your sniper scope and back. That's cool. Yeah, I um, appreciate that. The, the Steam template is, is, you know, I've been selling for 20 bucks and it's honestly, if you want to make a quick and dirty, get on to, um, got a weapon flashlight as well. That actually comes from our weapon. Um, hit marker, like a hit reaction, you mean? So when you actually hit the, um, the enemy, they actually move. Oh, this building doesn't have roof access, damn it. Yeah, I already had that set up in another project, so that's, that's pretty easy to do. But I will do that in a stream. Um, I've already got the animation starter pack. And they have hit reactions in them. So that would just be essential. Um, let's see, in my characters, animations... Um, I'll actually just put that in there with death. I will take that one. I can right click on it and retarget him. No, I don't need to retarget because I have the bots using that animation anyway. So I'm actually going to create an animation montage with that. And I will move the montage over here to the animations folder. So hit react one montage, that's good. Go in here to the blueprints, go into the bot base. And where we did all this crap here for taking damage. Um, just want to go ahead and 
grab this stuff here and this mesh reference and just kind of move them around a little bit come in from here and I'm going to have to shit I'm going to have to move it a lot more than that um, so I was going to just move the hell out of it for now and then I'm just going to drag from there and play montage no I don't want that one um, play animation montage and hit react I'm going to speed that up to two times the normal speed target with self screw it I can just grab that self reference pull it all the way back here do that File, save. There, you want to hear action? There you go. He has a hit reaction. So watch when he gets close enough. It was complicated. Maybe Jill has hard shit for. Her. It's seven o'clock in the damn morning. It makes a difference seeing that, but you know, excuse me, sir, can you please fuck off? <laughs> Shoot him, he has a little hit reaction there. Shoot him enough, and he just falls over to hell dead. So let's tag one with sniper mode. Oh, I see you hiding right through there. Yeah, you don't know who the hell just shot you, do you? So there, there's your hit reaction. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I could also do other shit like um, at the same point, whenever we're doing this, do the animation montage, set the, the rotation. So when we hit him, he's going to do the hit reaction, but he's also going to turn and face us. And if he's within range, a visual range of us, he'll come after us. Um... So yeah, that that was that was a, a challenging thing to add in there. The hard part of that is actually to make it look neat in the blueprint. Um, so that'll be for my next trick. So the buildings, these were modular pieces of crap to begin with. Um, so that's why the you know everything looks ugly in here. So I can come in here and like, okay, well this one, I want. Well, that one's got a roof access. Well, let's grab this one right here. And I don't want that one on there, so let's delete that. And let's go over here to our meshes. And, well, this is just a regular floor. So I'm going to Control C and Control V. And I'm just going to add another floor to this. Just want to make sure that it lines up perfectly. And that looks good. Yeah, these are really, really terrible modular uh, buildings. So let's actually go ahead and put on a roof. You can see this roof here has got a cutout already to allow for the stairwell. So just need to slide this in position, and that's the flat roof. And just kind of line that up. Just there we go. So now when we come upstairs, we can now stand on the rooftop of this building. So let's hit play. And that was this one. We added another floor to it. Come in here. It's dark. Let's turn on our flashlight. And it looks kind of tacky right there, but whatever. So then we go over here, go up the stairs. And we can go all the way out and around, or we can take the little shortcut right here and walk through. So I like the flashlight. The flashlight works good. 
Need some disco music though. And some some hookers. Gotta have hookers. Gotta build lighting. So now we're up on the rooftop. Don't need the flashlight. Hey. And now we can look down and be a dirty little bastard sniper. And hey, who the hell shot me? Damn you! Oh shit! Ouch! Well, he never saw who was kicking his ass. But can we jump from here to there? I'm pretty sure the answer is no. So let's get a running start. Let's sprint and oh, not quite. Land on top of one of the windows. But I actually took my time and actually built these uh, buildings a little bit nicer. Um, yeah. Another option is using the um, oh, get dark polypixel freebies or you know other asset packs to do this. But I wanted this project to stay. Everything was free. So now I can run and jump over to that rooftop. Sprint, jump, and there we go. Of course, I can't get in. But I built these to be modular. Um, got an individual stairwell. And this was in the first of the other uh, videos of BSP geometries, converting them into static meshes, um, things like that. And um, got our first floor. We can spawn this in. And you can see it's um, got your stairs. It's not a one-story building, but it's a, the first floor of a building. Um, and then you could just add in like a mid-floor or a top floor actually has a sealed roof. So you can't actually get up there. But it's not really a first floor because there's no doors on it. So if you wanted a two-story building, you could combine this one, a top floor, with a first floor. They would lock together and become... So you could build this as tall as you wanted to by just putting these sections in. Um, and then w where I do that is I create a map called Construction. Let's save all. And the Construction map is actually where I can come in here and test the fit bend of things and everything else. So this is actually the floors. But this is actually made out of individual pieces parts so I can go in there and okay well I don't like this the floor arrangement I can change this wall that wall this wall whatever change the individual pieces and all I did was I made this map out of um, the starter content came in here to architecture you can lay down a floor you can lay down wall sections doors, you got windows, you got solid walls, you got all this stuff, and you can combine these together and convert them into a, st a single static mesh. So, doing it that way, see, I'm not worried about doing the lighting on this map here, but I created all these different individual building pieces, modular building sections, that I could actually create entire skyscrapers or single story buildings, two story buildings, small houses, big houses. You can make as many houses as you want from 400 by 400, 400 by 400 wall door, wall window, 400 by 400 wall. So you've got enough pieces to go in there and mix and match and make your own little buildings. And that was in, I think, video two of basic training or three. Because uh, one of them was in dealing with, uh, I think it's video three. Video two was actually with BSP geometries. And that's how I created my stairs. Was I came in here, added a BSP geometry in of a set of stairs. And see, they come out gray. But if you want them to come out with a material already on them, you pick your material, select it ahead of time, and let's make some chrome stairs. And I'm going to drag them into the map. Hey, look, awesome, we have chrome stairs. And let's go ahead and control C, control V, make a second set, a uh, copy of that, turn one to subtractive, remove one stair from it, and then move it over a little bit. And you want the lines to kind of meet like so. Look at it from the side and just kind of move your your bottom one around. 
And if I want to do it like this, looks like I have floating stairs. But sometimes you get that little blemish on the floor. Scroll up when you do it. That gets rid of it. So now it looks like you've got floating stairs and you can actually combine those two together and you can actually turn that into a yeah, create static mesh and there you go. You can create your own static mesh from those two BSP geometries that now look like a um, set of floating stairs. So and I showed how to convert BSP geometries to static meshes, convert multiple static meshes together to make one static mesh, and then how to change it to where you don't get screwed up lighting and that kind of stuff. But as for right now, we're two and a half hours into this video, and it is almost exactly seven o'clock in the morning. So with that, I'm going to, like, get out of this video. I'm going to take care of some biological extractions, and I'm going to go ruin my lungs a little bit more. Yes, I'm having respiratory uh, problems. It's causing me to, um, you yeah, know, not be able to sleep good. That's why the hell I'm up right now at 7 o'clock in the morning. So, yes, yeah, so let's make it better by going and having a smoke. All right. Well, I will be on Discord for a couple minutes if you guys still want to chat or whatever. Um, and yeah, just give me a shout. Like I said, I'll probably stay up for another 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or whatever. But I'm just going to get off the stream. As much as I love to hear my damn self talk, voice is starting to get tired. Yep, I'm working on it, but think about it. I've been smoking longer than most of you guys have been alive. I've been smoking for roughly. 35 years so I don't know should I that may be wrong I'm 50 and I started smoking when I was around 14 15 so yeah it's when you stop moving and get docile when you get old is when the shit gets to really be a problem but yep I'm working on it I've got some um nicotine patches and I'm gonna make a video here in the next day or so and I'm going to slap on a patch or three maybe at the same time hit the gum hit the e-cig you know <coughs> yeah, those things are worse than damn cigarette. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll I'll hit the patches, maybe hit some gum and e cig, and be one nasty bitchy gripey son of a bitch, and see how long I can and actually stream without having to take a smoke break. Hey, this was two and a half hours. That's actually pretty good for me. So. See if we can stretch. I'll stay on and I'll stream the entire time. The only time I will take a break, I will leave shit running and I'll actually go and take a leak you know, or whatever. And if I gotta go to the bathroom, that's the only reason. And I will put the thing down. You can see in the video, that's the door right, right there that I will be going out of to go have a smoke. So, yeah, you'll see whenever I get up to walk away and come back. So, yeah, we'll, we'll work on that for one day, probably hopefully this week. We'll try to do a quit smoking stream. Push it as long as I possibly can. So, okay, guys. I'm going to get out of here. And I hope some of you guys actually found some of this stuff a little bit useful. Because I, I don't know about you guys, but this, this project right here, I've been making so many other... Yeah, I broke my damn top down because I tried to make it multiplayer. And it was working just fine. And all of a sudden, just things broke, and I haven't found the actual spot where I broke it yet. But I couldn't just do a, a top-down game. I had to make it into a frickin' multiplayer top-down game. So, yeah. I mean, if you want me to do more of the top-down stuff, you gotta let me know in Discord, man. Hey, do some more top-down stuff. I don't know if I'm gonna do a top-down multiplayer just yet, but if you want to do more top-down stuff, I'll be glad to screw around with that. But I've actually grown kind of fond of 
this being a single player game, I'm actually creating a single player game, start adding in some objectives or whatever, you know, just making this. So just just type on Discord. You're typing right now, so you can type on Discord. And um, yeah. Let me know. And um, like I said, you know, just let me know what you want to see and I will try to do it. So I'm gonna let this finish doing its um shaders and I'm gonna close everything down and prop my feet up and probably go to bed here soon. Hopefully, because it's seven in the morning. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.